Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam toy part 16, cutting the boiler barrel to form the firebox area. There are many ways to do this, I chose a few simple methods to show how I did it. If I was making a production run of these boiler barrels, I would not use this method. The first thing I did was to cut down each side using my bandsaw, being very careful not to cut into the copper at the opposite side underneath. For the curved part at the top, I decided to use this well-tried and very simple method. I'm using a small twist drill and I'm going to drill quite a lot of holes. Eventually, I will join up the holes by using a circular cutter and break out the part. I'm using quite a small twist drill for this job. If you use a very small twist drill, once you've drilled all the holes and broken out the part that you don't want, the jagged edges are easier to trim. If you think about that logic, you will see what I mean. I have a very small Proxon jigsaw, but personally I don't like it because the blades are very small and quite weak and break easily. Plus I'm really concerned about not marking the front surface of the boiler. Here I'm drilling the holes in a random fashion. I'm doing this for a reason, you'll see why shortly. I don't know whether to tell the truth or not. No, I'll make up some excuse for why all the holes wander about once I get past halfway. It was nothing to do with me getting very bored with the job. Using a diamond disc cutter to trim the jagged edges left by the drilling operation. This is where the job gets dangerous. I don't mean dangerous to me. I'm miles away from the cutting area. If this diamond cutter slips and runs onto the boiler barrel, then it is scrap. And believe me, that will be very easy to do. When doing jobs like this, it's very easy to start off okay and then get bored with the job, and then the cutter slips onto the outer part of the barrel, and as the warning says, if the cutter slips onto the front part of the boiler, then it is scrap. The diamond cutter made short work of joining the holes together, until I got past halfway, when the holes were not quite in line, then it became much more difficult to work my way through. And that is why at the left hand side, towards the end, where I purposely drilled the holes inboard, it's very difficult to get the cutter to go through the solid copper. And also the entire barrel started to get hot, almost too hot to touch, close to the cutting area. So I haven't lost the plot after all, I purposely did drill the holes in the wrong place. And here, after quite a while, I'm still attempting to cut the line. Eventually though, I did get through it. Now it's time to break out the piece. Very carefully, using a pair of grips, I bent it back and forth a few times to stress the metal, and then suddenly it came loose, just what I wanted. And as I mentioned earlier, that's why I used a smaller drill bit. Had I have used like a 1 8 drill bit, the remaining metal would be strong enough to possibly distort the boiler barrel during the extraction process. Even with the original piece of metal out of the way, I still needed to do a little bit more trimming with the diamond cutter. This is my preferred method for doing this job, but it is important to use good quality sanding drums. This one unfortunately is very small, very cheap and not very good. This was the last item that I ever bought from the centre aisle of a supermarket. When buying these small sanding drums, I find that it is a false economy to buy the cheap stuff. I much prefer the Dremel type. They last longer and they cut better. This particular sanding drum really wasn't that bad. It was very easy to use and I've got about half of the way there. But suddenly, for no reason, it just flew off the holder. The sanding drum soon wore out, so I thought that I would try an 80 grit flapper wheel. This was no good at all. The edge of the copper that I was cutting just wore out the flapper wheel. As you can see, it's really digging in, and it ruined it. Copper can be quite a tenacious metal to work with. What about using a diamond drum type cutter? Not a good idea, as this was far too violent and aggressive. Just like a girlfriend I used to have. I found that for this job, using this cylindrical diamond cutter to be very difficult. It's very coarse and it really took some effort to stop it from wandering about. Having said that, it did cut the copper fairly well. It left a lot of burrs, 
and despite my efforts it did slip but luckily towards the inside of the boiler barrel and that's not a problem. I went back to yet another cheap drum sander and as you can see it's just wearing itself out almost immediately and then it does this. Then I did it this way using a good old fashioned method, a needle file. This turned out to be a very labour intensive job but at least it allowed me to get right into the corners. It was also useful for removing the saw cut marks from the band saw where I initially cut down the sides. And using a needle file you have a lot of control. You're more likely to stick the point in your hand than you are to scratch the outside of the barrel. I found that the best method was to use a larger, higher quality sanding drum. This one is from a set of Dremel sanding drums that I bought and it works much better than the previous ones. As you can see it is removing more metal at every pass without destroying itself and it's very easy to control because don't forget even at this stage if I slip onto the outer part of the barrel I do have a problem. Finishing using emery cloth. You can't beat this stuff for a fine finish and the control is good although really I did slightly scratch the outer part of the barrel with the emery cloth believe it or not. Thankfully that is not a problem as it will polish out. It's time now to drill some holes in the barrel and this is how not to do it. Can you see how much the drill bit is wandering about? Because it's a curved surface as well doesn't make it any easier. Instead of taking the risk of drilling the hole in the wrong place I used a centre drill. And the good thing about centre drills is you can manoeuvre them as they're drilling to make the hole in exactly the right place. These are the holes where the steam engine mechanism bolts through to the boiler shell. They are in the area of the firebox like the holes around the bottom edge. These holes at the bottom, and there are three of them, is the way that the boiler is mounted onto the base. The two centre holes are going to be for the water gauge and here I'm temporarily threading the holes 3 16 by 40 threads per inch. The water gauge fittings would be okay just screwed into these holes as the barrel of the copper is quite thick. But I may end up fitting some bushes just to make it look right. It's time now to deburr the holes on the inside of the barrel followed by polishing up the outside of the barrel on my polishing spindle and finishing it off with some brasso. The job is starting to take shape. This is the water gauge fitted in place and it looks pretty good to me. That is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.